So my last video was on judging others, and if you haven't seen it, uh, definitely check it out. And I feel like that goes hand in hand with guilt. So first and foremost, sometimes when we judge people, and um, we kind of condemn them for their sin, this can turn into guilt. Not necessarily our guilt, but we can make them feel guilty. Um, and obviously, you know, this is not um, what Christ wants for the church. He wants us to live guilt and shame free. He didn't die on the cross for us to feel guilty. He died on the cross for us to be free. So um, if you are in a position where you feel like you've been judging someone, making them feel guilty for something that they did, um, definitely pray about that. Um, making someone feel guilty is not necessarily beneficial, not only for their walk with Christ, um, but you know their spiritual walk. It's not really helpful to help them change. And I can say that confidently because Jesus doesn't make us guilty. So it doesn't make us feel guilty. Um, so, um, you know, if you're holding a grudge against somebody, maybe they did something to you and it could have been awful. They could have done, th done something horrible towards you and you keep, you know, bringing that up and uh, making them feel guilty. Now, I'm not talking about um, bringing something to light and discussing it and, you know, having a healthy discussion and, um, bringing up your thoughts, standing up for yourself. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about when you and um, another person, if they have hurt you, um, and if you have kind of patched things up with them um, and have forgiven them and, you know, that whole process has started and you're starting to move on from that situation, um, holding a grudge against somebody um, is not helpful at all. So, you know, bringing that sin up over and over just to make them feel guilty, um, it's, you know, if you've forgiven them, then the Bible just says, don't continue to bring that up. Um, just as Jesus said, he said, you know, I forgive you and I remember your sins no more. So I am the one who blots out your trans transgression for my own sake, and I will remember your sins no more. Isaiah forty three twenty five, and this is God speaking about our sin. So this verse is straight to the point. God is the one that forgives us of all sin. So Transgression is a really big fancy church word. I'm going to look up what it means. Transgression, an act that goes against a law, rule, or code of conduct, an offense. So I've done a video previously on um, forgiveness. And basically, when we feel guilty, um, sometimes even if we've done something, not necessarily to someone else, maybe we've done something like, um, you know, maybe we had a commitment to not have sex before marriage. And for whatever reason, someone had sex before marriage and now they just feel so super guilty about it even though they've asked for forgiveness and god automatically forgives us as long as we have a repentant heart and they're truly you know um working with god on on the area of their life but sometimes if we sin in an area we can feel guilty and shameful that we've sinned in that area and it's kind of like you're not forgiving yourself so the bible talks about forgiving others but um, you need to forgive yourself and move on as well. So God is the one that blots out our transgressions, our sin, the offense that we've done against him for his own sake. And I'll remember your sins no more. So God forgives us and that's it. That is it. That's all we have to do is ask for forgiveness. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John 3.17 So God sent Jesus as a sacrifice to save us and we can go to heaven if we just believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world. The scripture said that he didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn us, but that through him, and that's the most important word in this entire scripture, through Christ we might be saved. Jesus was sent to save, not to condemn. So the only way that we can avoid condemnation is to believe that we are saved through Christ. There is no other way, just through him. I was listening to um, a sermon on guilt and shame. I can't remember who it was, but they said that if you feel guilty and shameful about something, then, mostly guilty, then that can kind of be um, a sense of pride. And the way that they explained it was prideful because if God can, you know, if you believe that Jesus came to save us, um, if you believe that the word is true and that we should not be condemned, um, we should not feel guilty, God remembers our sin no more, 
And if, you know, Jesus was sent to cleanse us of our sin and you feel like, you know, guilty and shameful and you don't feel like you're good enough or that, you know, your sin for some reason is not covered under what the word says, they explained it as if that's kind of selfishness, as if your sin is too great to be forgiven by the almighty God. And so if God is able to save the world and remember our sins no more, then, you know, if you're feeling guilty about something and you don't want to let it go, then it's a, a kind of a sense of pride because you don't think that God is big enough and vast enough and powerful enough to forgive your sin. Um, and, you know, we should accept the fact that the word says that as long as we for, um, ask for repentance and, you know, God remembers our sin no more. And no sin is above the forgiveness of God. And don't forget that. God forgives everything and he remembers it no more. So if you're still holding on to that sin, um, you know, that's it. You're holding on to us. The word says, I'll remember your sins no more. So God has already forgotten about it. You know, um, you're the one that's holding on to it. And um, it's time to let that go. It's not helping you. And it's counterproductive for your relationship with God. God is a big enough God to forgive all sins. And then sometimes you have to be careful as well because sometimes people feel like they do something wrong or something, you know, bad. They sin. And the only way to make it better is to do a lot of things that are good. And again, that is a sense of pride because then that way of thinking is kind of saying, well, God is not big enough to just forgive me and then I move on. Um and try to avoid sin just because I love him, but I need to do these works in order to gain my salvation back. And that's just, that's not true. It's not true at all. The word says that we just need to accept that Jesus is the Savior and we are saved. Um, and our works of the flesh will never save us, ever. So, you know, if you feel like you've done something or many things that are sinful or hurtful, and you feel like you are not good enough for God's forgiveness, you're not good enough for God to for, forget your sins and remember them no more. If you're feeling like what you've done is just so horrible that God can't forgive you, and um, you know maybe you feel like you have to do a bunch of good things in order to gain your salvation back or to get right with God again, or maybe you feel like you've done so many bad things that you know bad things are bound to happen to you. That's just not how God works at all, and it's so amazing that we serve a God that's so beautiful in the sense where we can mess up over and over again and he just forgives us and he just loves us unconditionally no matter what we do he's always there available to forgive us we just need to access the holy spirit and ask him for the help repent and ask him for forgiveness and he will be there and you know what sometimes we feel guilty because of our own thoughts and a lot of times satan will put things in our head that will cause us to go down that road of guilt and shame and relive that but whenever you are getting those thoughts of guilt and shame, stop. Don't think about it. Don't go down that road mentally. Um, don't let that fester and manifest in your mind because the more that you think about it, the more you will feel it and the more it will play out in your life. So when you start to feel guilty or start to kind of relive something in your head that you're shameful about, change your thinking fast. Um, the more you focus on the Word of God and the more that you kind of take your mind off of that, the easier it'll become to not feel guilty and shameful about it. You have to choose your thoughts and you have to be very mindful of the things that you let your mind um, think about and, and focus on. So if you are someone out there who has been dealing with a lot of guilt and shame and maybe you feel like the things that you've done in your life is just so horrible and you don't understand how God can ever forgive someone like you, the truth is, is that he, when Jesus was on the cross and he's being crucified, there was a criminal who was also next to him. And the criminal, you know, even though they were a thief or, um, you know, they sinned. So imagine, you know, he spent his entire life sinning, his whole life. He's on the cross with Jesus. And right before he dies, he says, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Um, and Jesus said, you know, today you'll be with me in paradise. He was saved. So someone who led a life of sin, just because he had the posture and the heart of, you know, um, accepting Jesus into his heart, he was saved. And so 
Um, if you feel like whatever you've done is way above forgiveness and salvation, it's just not true. You don't have to do anything in order to gain your salvation. You don't have to do anything to gain the love and the forgiveness of Christ. He gives it to us freely. And whenever you start to hear those lies that Satan um, tries to throw at us, say no. You know, say no. Tur change your mind. Change your thoughts. And maybe write down some of these scriptures so that you can easily pull it out and start to read it. I am forgiven. Jesus does love me. God does love me. He remembers my sin no more. Jesus did not come into the world to condemn, but he came so that through him we might be saved. Speak these truths into your life and watch how amazingly powerful the word of God is and how that can make such a huge difference in your life. So thank you so much for watching. If you're struggling with any of this, I am praying for you so hard, praying for each and every person watching this video, um, and I'll see you next time. Bye.